Today's lesson is going to focus on graphing slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is, of course, when you have uh, y by itself. So you get the y equals mx plus b involved. Usually, uh, the x and the y are just what you plug in to get your line. So if I had, let's see if I can get the pen to work today. Um, if I had this line, there's two components that really matter to me. How it changes and then kind of where my starting point is. So kind of where it hits the uh, the y-axis is what we consider our starting point. Our b here would be our y-intercept, whereas the m value represents slope, and there's other videos on slope. The x and y would be the x and y values that fall at each one of these points, here, here, and here, whatever dots you tend to make. So when we graph pretty simple stuff, especially if we have calculator access, I'll show you how to graph both ways. Now. My first one says y equals 1x minus 3. What I tend to do when I don't have a number, um, if it's a multiply relationship, I want to show that there's 1x there. I also circle the x variable, uh, the variable and the coefficient, and see what's left over. It says y is equal to negative 3. So when I graph, I'm going to start out down at negative 3. I'm going to make a dot here. Then I look at um, my number in front of my variable, so my coefficient would be my slope. And it says 1, which as a fraction is 1 over 1. I always assume from the starting point that the number on top tells me, so if I have top versus bottom, the number on top tells me to go up or down. And if it's positive, it tells me to go up. If it's negative, it tells me to go down. My bottom number, I always assume, tells me to go to the right. That's my initial thought process. If you can't do it due to space limitations, all you have to do is flip both. So if you can't go down and right, you have to go up and left. But you have to make sure that you do both of them, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. Anyway, this tells me to go up one because it's positive one and right one. So when I have my little graph here, I'm going to go up one and right one from here, up one, right one. Remember, don't make your dot and then go back to the origin. People do that sometimes, but it's not on the line then. So start at your point, starting point and go up and over from there. So my graph is going to look a little bit like this. Now you may have access to a calculator, so what you would do here, uh, the nice thing about slope intercept form, calculators already are prepared to deal with it, as long as it's a graphing calculator. Oh, I popped it off the screen, that didn't help. So in this situation, I'm dealing with y equals, and clear this out, 1x minus 3. Hit graph, and there it is. It looks almost exactly uh, like the one I just had. So I'm going to go on to the next one. The next one says y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 4. So I'm going to circle the information, the coefficient in the variable, x, and I'm looking what's left over. It says y equals negative 4. So I'm going to go down on the y-axis to negative 4. Negative 3 over 4 tells me I can go down 3 if I'm going right 4. So from here, I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to go right 1, 2, 3, 4. So somewhere in this general area, and it'll look a little bit like this. And when you get your answer, make sure you know it's going down left to right, which means you should have a negative slope, and you do. So that's, a, you know, it's a good reminder to make sure that you get the right answer. Otherwise, if you end up flipping one and not the other, you get the wrong answer, even though you know it should be something else. To grab this one, uh, y equals, and if you have the TI-84+, plus, hit alpha y equals, and you can bring up the fraction menu. Um, so I'm going to pick ND negative 3 over 4, and then click out before you punch in the variable, uh, minus 4. One of the big errors is getting negative 4 when it's not negative. If you don't see anything else, it's probably minus. And the calculator gets really weird when you put in a negative there. So see, it looks almost just like it. Uh, the next one is y equals 1 half x. In this situation, the which is the reason really that I do the circle the coefficient variable thing, you'll notice that there's nothing left outside of it. Uh, in that situation, it means y equals plus 0. Essentially, this one starts at the origin, right here. Now, from my slope, it tells me to go up 2, and, or up 1, and right 2. So I'm going to go up 1, 
write to, and I'm going to make a dot. So I'll get something like this. If I go into graph it on the calculator, go to y equals, clear out this stuff, uh, and go into the fraction menu again. I don't even need to add the plus zero, it'll do it itself, it knows. So there's that one. Uh, the next one is y equals negative 4. Now in this situation there's nothing to circle, which means that I don't have any sort of slope uh, representation that I need to use. So I'm just going to go to y equals negative 4 and make a dot there. What I could add is y equals 0 x's minus 4, which would tell me to go up none and right none. So I'd have this. Nice flat line. So if you have y equals a number, you just have a flat line, a, a horizontal line that you can look at. And, uh, and in the graphing calculator, really super simple, just go in y equals, and then you do uh, negative 4. Since there isn't anything to add it or subtract it to, you could just put negative 4 there. You could put 0x minus 4 if you like, it probably worked just fine. Let's see, you get that nice straight line. The last one is where the calculator sort of loses its mind a little bit, x equals 3. Now in this situation, um, you don't have y equals at all. So if you have a, a scenario where it's x instead of y, you just need to make the same type of adjustment you did when it was y equals negative 4. So this tells me I'm going to go on the x-axis to the 3, and then I'm going to graph straight up and down. So instead of having one that's flat, I have one that's straight up and down because there is no x to base it off of other than, oh yeah, I already have x anyway. So if you just see a letter and a uh, x or y anyway, an axis and a number, it tells you that you want to go to that point and make a line that's perpendicular to that axis. So not really a big deal. Graphing in the calculator, kind of pointless. It's based off the idea that you're working with a y equals structure, so it's almost not even wor worth your time trying to figure out some weird way to make it do what you want it to do. Instead, just go ahead and um, hand graph it, and then you'll know what it looks like. And that's it for slope-intercept form graphing. Not super big deal, so uh, good luck working with it in the future.